Okay, so I just figured out a little trick and you're gonna benefit from it. Not only am I going to show you step-by-step -step how to create a beautiful scrolling slideshow, but how within a few seconds, you can easily create an alignment guide that like a magnet snaps your photos and videos right into place. In fact, let me show you right now. Let's go. Okay, so to create the alignment guide, we're going to start off by adding a background. It doesn't matter which color you choose for this, just grab one and drop it into the timeline. Next, let's shorten the duration of this clip to two seconds. Now, since this guide is just for our reference only, we don't want this to show in the video. So let's right click on this clip and select hide clip. We'll want a good amount of these to work with. So let's right click on the clip and select copy. Now, making sure that the playhead is at the beginning of the track, press and hold the keyboard shortcut, Control V, like this. That'll be good for now. Next, let's add three extra video tracks. Then, detach all three tracks, just like this. To finish up, let's highlight all parts of our new alignment guide and drag it up, out of the way, and into the top video track right here. That's it. Now that we have our guide above, we can drop photos and videos below and snap them right into place. Let's give it a try. So let's grab all of our photos and videos and drop them into the main video track in the timeline. Now using our guide above, let's highlight the first clip here and adjust to exactly four parts. See how easily that just snapped right into place? Let's do this exact same thing to the rest of our clips in the timeline. Again, one clip should be equal to four parts using the guide above. When you go to a video clip, be sure to use your favorite part of the footage when resizing to the four parts. Keep in mind that if you have a video clip that's not quite long enough, you can slow down the speed of the video clip to extend the duration, allowing you to completely fill the four parts above. Okay, next, rearrange the clips to your desired order. And whichever clip you use as the first clip in your sequence, shorten that first clip to two parts. With everything sized right here in the timeline, we also need to make sure that everything is sized right here in the preview window too. For this, all we need to do is highlight all of our clips, go to the crop tool and click apply. Now, while all these clips are highlighted, now is a great time to add any desired LUTs or make any necessary color adjustments. For this example, let's go to the filters tab and add vignette to by right clicking and choosing apply to selected clips. Then let's drop down to the clips in the timeline and with everything still highlighted, right click and select clone. Now let's highlight just the top row, click the more tools icon, select position, and then resize a bit smaller and recenter like this. We've just created a foreground layer and a background layer for our slideshow. So as we go through this, just keep in mind that the bottom video track will be our background and the top two tracks above will be our foreground. Now let's begin editing these. So down in the timeline, we'll need to highlight all of our background clips at the same time. Next, we'll go to filters and grab fisheye magnify and drop that on our clip like this. While we're at it, let's go to the blur filter and grab the intense blur option and drop that onto our background clip as well. Now, using the second and third video tracks, we need to stagger the foreground clips so that they overlap one another. Starting with the second clip in the slideshow, let's move that to the track above, overlapping the first clip just like this. Then we'll continue staggering these clips, moving the third clip below, then moving the fourth clip above, then the fifth clip below, and so on. Now, down in the main video track, referencing the guide above, let's resize the first background clip to just one part. For the rest of the background clips, again, using the guide above, carefully shorten the clips to two parts. Now, for video clips, the method I'm about to show you is very simple, but extremely important, so take your time with it. So just like this, we we'll wanna left click in the middle of the clip, then using the guide above, shorten the beginning of the clip one part, then shorten the end of the clip one part. Let's go over this one more time slowly. We'll left click in the middle of the clip, shorten the beginning of the clip one part, then shorten the end one part. Let's repeat this exact same process for the rest of our background clips. When we get to the last clip in the background sequence, we'll want this to be equal to three parts so that it finishes evenly with the foreground clip above. So let's only shorten the beginning by one part like this. Next, let's highlight all of the background clips, go to transitions, right click on crossfade and choose add after selected clips. Then real quick, let's drop down to the timeline and get rid of the very last transition. We won't need that one. Okay, from here, let's move up to the foreground clips. And starting with our first clip in the sequence, we'll add advanced animation. Moving up to the preview window, let's grab the frame and position just to the right of the preview window like this. Now, down in the timeline, let's spread out the keyframes to opposite ends of the clip. For the second clip, we'll again add animation 
and then up in the preview window, we use the guides to reposition the frame just to the right of the preview window. Then down in the timeline, we'll right click on the other keyframe, select edit, move up to the preview window and reposition this frame to the left of the preview window. Then of course, we'll go back down into the timeline and slide the keyframes all the way to each end, just like this. This part can be tricky, so let's go through this process slowly one more time. We'll add advanced animation, then head over to the preview window and move the frame to the right, just outside the preview window. The guides will make this easy by pulling the frame into the perfect position. Next, let's go down to the timeline, right click on the other keyframe and select edit. From here, we'll head back up to the preview window and reposition the frame just to the left side of the preview window. Once finished, we'll return to the timeline and spread out the keyframes all the way to each side of the clip like this. Let's continue the same process for the rest of the foreground clips. When we get to the last clip in the sequence, as usual, we'll spread the keyframes out to each end, but this time, we'll only edit the first keyframe, this one here on the left. Up in the preview window, we'll reposition the frame to the left side like this. Now for the final cherry on top, let's go back through the timeline and add one last keyframe to each foreground clip so that our foreground clips look like they're rotating in towards the camera. All we need to do is drag the playhead to the center of the foreground clip, then with the clip highlighted, go up to the animation window and select add keyframe. Now over in the preview window, we'll resize the frame so that it's a bit larger and recenter like this. Let's go over this step one more time. We'll drag the playhead to the center of the next clip Go up to the animation window and select add keyframe. Up here in the preview window, we'll increase the size of the frame and recenter like this. Let's continue the same process for the rest of the foreground clips in the timeline. Okay, one last thing. To keep the very first clip in the sequence looking uniform, we'll want to edit the very first keyframe and increase the size just like the others. And that should do it. If you want to reuse the slideshow over and over with different photos and videos, then you're going to want to watch this video first. Click on it and I'll see you over there.